Hi guys, I'm Lawrence Shaw and I'm the Lead Historic Environment Advisor for Forestry England and I've been asked to see you today to talk to you about one of these or specifically this bit about one of these. So my, my background is um, I'm a remote sensing specialist and I look at the use of LiDAR with, to map and record uh, archaeological features predominantly in woodland and then to inform heritage management as well as engage public and, and undertake volunteer surveys and, and things like that. Um, but more recently, I was fortunate enough to purchase an iPhone Pro Max, which I'm sure you're aware has a new inbuilt LiDAR scanner, which has been, it, it been made part of its functionality. Um, the purpose of this scanner is to improve the photographic output. So it has around about five meter range, and this allows the camera to um, provide depth of field and, and improve the quality of, of the photos that, um, that it produces. Um, but as a byproduct, you also get an inbuilt laser scanner. Um, it's worth bearing in mind that Apple don't actually produce a LiDAR application that, that, that comes with the phone. This is something that you have to get um, from the App Store. Um, and so your, your requirement, uh, you're required to, um, to, to sort of look at it, uh, other additional um, providers in that sense. But um, but there are a few good good options out there. I'd recommend you all check out Alban Denoyle on Twitter, who has a handle at Alban, A-L-B-N, um, who is one of the, the founders of Sketchfab, um, an online um, 3D modeling hosting website. Um, and he's done a fantastic blog, blog, which will be made available in the details below by, by your uh, supervisors, um, which sort of goes through the different apps that are available for, for the iPhone to use the, um, to use the LiDAR sensor and um, some of the pros and cons that come with these. Uh, for myself, I, I've been using the, the LiDAR scanner for a whole heap of different things and I'll, I'll, hopefully there's a few images scanning through now of some of the different things that I've used. The main apps that I've been using or trialling are Polycam and uh, Sightscape. So, and I just thought I'd give you a quick review of some of the issues or considerations around these. Um, the, the headlines are really, if you want a quick and dirty scan, then the, li the LiDAR sensor on the iPhone is great. Um, However, if you're looking to do anything good or worthwhile, I'd recommend photogrammetry. And there's a whole heap of different reasons for this, but this is largely to do with what, what the, um, the sensor can do and also what the, um, what the apps can do. So issues around Polycam, for example, are that it creates a, um, an automatic mesh. And whilst you can modify this, it's particularly poor at doing artifacts or objects. Um, and it's quite broad with its mesh creation particularly when you're looking at detailed models such as the statue, which I've included in as some of these images, um, they can become warped and, and saggy and not really that great. Um, they're all right for other things. So I've also included a picture of a tree that I scanned. And if you don't go too close into detail, it looks like a 3D model of a tree and quite engaging and a nice immediate output. But in terms of detailed, useful recording for archaeological purposes, scientific purposes, that this this type of app is is questionable. Um, the other app that I particularly like is is called um, Sightscape, and this produces information in a point cloud, which you can then export directly to Sketchfab, which is a fantastic resource. Obviously, you need a paid membership if you want to do anything vaguely good on Sketchfab, which again is a issue but you can also export your models to um, Dropbox and then play around with these within in subsequent um, data visualizing tools um, which I haven't done yet but I'd, I'd recommend having a play with if you can. Um, what's great about Sightscapes is it's, it's all spatial 3D data and you could include in theory um, known points within within these data so a few of the examples I'm including include a um, an RNL historic boat house, a royal uh, lifeboat um, sort of rescue uh, historic building. And you can see it covers quite a large area and were you to include known points using a DG DGPS in this, you could in theory export it um, with it into um, into other data sets, other, other, other software in, in with, with useful file format exports. Um, again, it, it, at the moment, I'd say it's all relatively early don't think there's a particularly good use for it for scientific archaeological research but it is good and useful for um, putting out quick visualizations and recording information whilst you're out in the field as, a, as an additional data set. 
perhaps as a preliminary assessment of a site, which you then go back and do a more detailed survey with a, a specific terrestrial laser scanner, such as a Leica, um, or um, through photogrammetry.